2021, right? Huge year, massive year. I moved three times. <laughs> it's been insane. I would, I would not do that again, I hope. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> But it's been an incredible year, you guys. My parents and I were debating last night over whether or not I'm an introvert. My dad doesn't think that I am, but uh, my mum emphatically <laughs> thinks that I am. I also think that I am. Uh, so doing something like a YouTube channel is a little bit out of my character, I would say, because I am a private person. But you guys, I am so thankful to my husband who encouraged me to start and to Rochelle who told me just do it uh, from Monolane Furniture. I am so thankful that I started. You guys have changed my life dramatically. Being able to do this as my job was always a dream and it's largely because of you guys that I can do this and I am so grateful and so excited about 2022. I thought I would recap the top five videos from 2021. They surprised me actually. One of them is my absolute favorite. It did not make it to number one but the others, the other four, especially number one in terms of views, has really surprised me that it got as many views as it did. So let's do it. <laughs> so number five was a hutch that I made over for my son. He had a rather large Lego display and wanted somewhere nice to display them. So I found a top of a hutch because I'd already made the base over and sold it separately. And I do like to do that to top of hutches. And in this one, I get to try the BB Frosh. I think that's how you say it. Sorry if that's not. It's like this alternative to chalk paint and you can turn any latex paint into chalk paint. I didn't actually give a review. I totally forgot to do that. I, I liked it. It felt like chalk paint. It acted like chalk paint. And I'm a big fan of chalk paint. So I haven't used it again because I predominantly buy chalk paint. But I do have some latex paint where I think I would use this again. I got to build a base that I hadn't built before. I wanted to do something a little different. And I had seen a metal base actually like this and thought, oh, I could copy that and do it with wood. <laughs> so there it is. So that was number five. These afters were taken by my husband. <laughs> He's pretty good, isn't he, at taking those afters. So number four is this waterfall dresser. I'm not particularly drawn to this style, but I remember uploading this and thinking how surprised I was that it was as popular as it was. It, to me, I didn't do anything special in this video <laughs> other than having to dismantle three drawers because of that weird gray concrete glue thing that somebody used to try and repair it. So I had to take all of it apart, all three big drawers apart and re-glue them back together again. And I was going to try, you know, aging it, sort of giving it a rust look, but I didn't like it. So I just painted it in this beautiful antebellum blue. It's one of my favorite blues. And then decided to uh, stay in the top drawer. I sealed it all in with uh, polyacrylic. And then, you know, I was going for a rusty, rust aged look with that that the paint but then I decided oh, I'll just age it with wax so I ended up doing that after sealing it sorry <laughs> I know you guys if you've watched any number of videos right now you know I find it difficult to talk at the same time and concentrate 
from. My brain only wants to do Can one thing at a time. Out? And there's a Tammy uh, <laughs> cameo. That dog, honestly, mm -hmm. she's never far behind me. Can you say hi? Look, look over here. I really like the pulls on this and I, a, a lot of waterfall dresses have really unique pulls. They're so beautiful. I really did like this dress out, but it, again, it surprised me how much, how popular it was and how much you guys liked it, but there you go. All right, number three is my favorite. This is my favorite. If you watched the full video, you know how much I love this and how much I've been dying to do a bleach look, a, a whitewashed look to a piece of furniture. Oh. Giving it a whitewash, I'm not painting over it. I found my unicorn. So let's get started. I um denied and um denied over the color. Which color white was I gonna do? The hardest part, right, is picking the color. Okay, so I'm using DIY paint in crinoline. It's this beautiful cream color. And then, if you've watched the full video, which I'll put links to all the videos at the end, so if you haven't watched the full video, you can go back and do that. I don't know where my brain was. It, it wasn't functioning as it should, <laughs> that's for sure. Because uh, all through whitewashing, I could see evidence of tannins and oak is, um, that happens in, with oak and I just started mindlessly top coating where I had whitewashed and it was drawing those yellow tannins right out of the wood. Oh, crap. <laughs> so I had to fix, luckily I had only done that draw and that one panel and so I just had to fix those two areas but I, I waxed the rest of the piece. And it looks so stinking good. I just love it. Uh, it is not, sadly, housing all my beautiful decor and things, but I had originally gotten it anyway to house all my daughter's craft things that is ever growing, as well as our books. So, but it doesn't matter because every time I walk in and out of the sunroom, I get to see it and I smile and uh, and I'm just so happy that even though it was a lot of work <laughs> that it turned out as good as if it If you is. guys haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. It goes a long way to throwing my little channel out there into the ocean of bigger channels and so <laughs> I appreciate it very much. I like that little like and subscribe <laughs> so, you know subtle or not so subtle sign in the background <laughs> okay number four uh, crikey I meant number two I love this piece I did this largely based on the fact that my mum loves the color yellow and I miss her so much. I miss both my parents so much and we should have been home in Australia right now but um, you know, COVID, life. So when I did this piece for um, my first challenge that I got invited to, I was so excited and it's a great piece. I love the color, I love the inside of the drawers, uh, I even did that little hot glue trick that you saw to fix a corner of um, one of the drawers that was missing some of the wood. This took forever to sell too, it took ages and then I finally did sell it to um, a couple and he's an avid DIYer so I have a feeling <laughs> he's probably stripped it and done his own thing but that's fine. I don't know that for sure. It's just a feeling. 
but I loved it. I love how cheery it was and the combination of the wood top and that it reminds me of my mum. There's that corner that I fixed. And that's the inside. I papered, put rice paper in there. <gasps> oh, that was difficult to do, but worth it. It looked really good. Okay, this is number one, you guys. How is this number one? I don't even know. My husband and I have had many conversations about it, trying to analyze why this is number one. This style of furniture is, is last on my list. Um, a whole bunch of us got invited to do a competition with Corey over on Desert DIY. She does not host an ugly duckling competition. This was my entry for that competition. And it, it is, wasn't my, you know, go-to style of furniture and decor that I gravitate towards. It's more of a retro 70s sort of style and I completely embraced it. I mean, those handles, those drawer pulls are so unique. And let me tell you, I had a time and a half trying to get all that oh, um, veneer off the front, but it came off eventually. So I'm telling you there that the circle in the wallpaper that I put on the front of it has this color, this putty color. And so I just thought, oh, well, yep, I'm going to do the sides in that color, stain the top, tidy up the base and then wallpaper those drawers and spray paint those handles. I had a lot of strong opinions <laughs> about this dresser. And, and then I was grateful for a majority of you who were like, could appreciate, this is not my style of furniture either, but uh, you appreciated all the hard work and creativity that went into it. So thank you guys, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, I certainly never do a piece looking for everyone to love everything I do. I don't expect that at all, but I am very grateful when people are respectful and can appreciate the hard work and effort that goes into a piece. And even though it might not be a style, that's okay. Uh, I, yeah, like I said, I'm not looking for everyone to love everything I do. And there's Tammy again. Okay. So that was it. That was my top five for the year. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I think I'll create a playlist and I'll stick it below and you can go check those out. Happy New Year, you guys. I, like I said, am so grateful and thankful for you guys. It is largely because of you that I get to do this that I love doing. I love making over furniture. I love being able to share that journey with you. And I really love interacting and commenting back and forth with you guys below. Thank you so much for the ride so far. And I look forward to seeing you next week, which will be the new year. Well, this is releasing on New Year's Day, so it's the new year already. But anyway, I'll see you on next week's video. Bye guys. <laughs>